search for clues and careless words, traverse deep, dark dungeons, travel through the hello and welcome to Grug Gaming. And as you can tell by text flashing by too quickly on the screen for us to even read, this is a let's play for another Ultima game. This is going to be a let's play for Ultima 2. Feel free, I'm going to let it play one more time, uh, to read those as fast as you can. Oh my goodness, that's just a stupid fast display. Well, here we are at Ultima 2, the second in the Ultima series. And I'm going to go ahead and read you the background for this game before we get started. In fact, I'm going to let you watch that, watch that scroll by while I read you the background for this story. If you remember, in Ultima 1, we went out and defeated Mondain, the evil wizard, so that uh, he would not be able to use his evil powers on the land of Caesarea. We killed him, we destroyed his immortality gem, and were returned back to Caesarea to the present time. Well, let's go ahead and read, shall we? The story of Minax. When the arch evil Mondane was finally overcome by a gallant light, night. It's gonna be trouble reading today. Was it you? Rumors abounded. The most fearful one was that at the time of his demise, Mondane had been training an apprentice, a protege with amazing, powerful, natural, magical abilities. The rumor was squelched when colleagues of his conqueror entered his castle and found no sign of anyone. Life during Mondain's time of power was terrible. Never had a Prince of Darkness wielded so brutal a stick. Mondain was a disease on the landscape. He reigned over all the evils ever known, and more, he brought them all to fruition on Earth and its environs at once. He enjoyed seeing Earth's well-meaning humanoid squirm. With the destruction of Mondain and his all-powerful gem of evil, those horrors ceased. When nothing came of the rumor of a potential successor to this cancer, people were only too eager to accept its falsehood and throw off their cloaks of fear. The evils of the past were gone with their creator and perpetrator. At last the world was beautiful again and life was to be enjoyed, savored. So it was for several years, long enough for a child to grow to adulthood. They were exciting years for the strange appearance of the time doors opened a great era of new learning. A renaissance of timelessness. Creativity burst forth and new works proliferated. No one wanted to notice when the disease began again. But so it did. First, there was a single lost orc a farmer stumbled upon. What was it? Whence came it? Scientists knew in their secret hearts that the orc was the work of a sorcerer. And had that sorcerer been a benevolent one who had created the orc by accident, he would have come forward. But they didn't want to know it, so they put it aside. The orc was too sick and hurt to fight when it was first found. When it was sufficiently recovered and had begun to assert its learned wrathful ways, it discovered a conundrum in its weak little head. These creatures had saved its life. It grasped that much, and it didn't want to hurt them. Because the little lone orc had never been missed, it was not controlled by magical influences. It persisted with a pleasant benevolence. All the good orcs we see in towns and villages today have descended from this one unusual orc. But the good people of Earth should have realized its import those years ago. More and more, the evils of darkness began to show on Earth. By the time the people acknowledged that the evil was too powerful, too widespread to be overcome directly. Already its perpetrator was stronger and more wretched than any previous Prince of Darkness and had grown too proud to keep silent. Thus was the name of Minax, Enchantress of Evil, made known. She was a master of moving objects spiritually from the age of three, and proudly apprenticed to Mondain at age eleven. She had acceded to many times his power. The world she created made Mondain's reign look prosperous and carefree. For Minax was not content to spread evil among the good, causing misery and pain. She preferred to sow the seeds of evil in the good and thus set the good against the good, leaving no person untouched. Destruction abounded, and guilt and self-hatred tainted the earth. The climax was the devastation of 2111, Minax's greatest triumph to date. 
when ancient civilizations, born to love of beauty, of wisdom and reason, turned upon one another, and in their vicious anger and hate destroyed almost all of the very earth that had nurtured them. If it were not for the time doors, you would not be here now. Only the ability to move in time enabled any living thing to survive as far as is known. Since that awful day, survivors have devoted themselves to grasping the meaning of the event and to rethinking the concept of time and its dimensions. This dedicated group has researched, experimented, and hypothesized in the hope of finding some means of using the time doors to reverse time or to change a cause and reverse its effect. Throughout their studies, two complementary theories persisted. One was that evil was derived from a single overpowering source, which was Minax. The other was that the total elimination of the root cause could reverse its effects from all time. And if all immediacy was the present and all else was the future. That group, which Lord British chairs, extends its deepest respect and admiration to you for heroically volunteering for this extremely dangerous expedition into time. Know before you go that whether you succeed or fail, you have their gratitude and love. And if, know when you succeed, you will return to the present as it might have and should have been. Those in this small group assure you that they will never forget your great deed. But you should be aware that by the very nature of your success, that future generations, prospering in the sunlit glory of the universe that you have made, are apt to forget. Your satisfaction must be self-sufficient. If you understand all this and are still willing to venture forth, then go now with their abundant well wishes and the knowledge that their thoughts will be with you ceaselessly until you return. Farewell. May the force of good surround you throughout your trek. Wow. What an intro. If only that had some kind of really cool in-game cinematic, maybe, that would be awesome. All right. Have you been able to see that in the background enough? Do you have an idea of what we're getting into? It's going to be a great game. First thing we need to do here is create our character, our, our hero who's going to go forth on this time-traveling adventure, or time travel. So let's create a new character, shall we? We need to create. So we have some attribute points we need to distribute. So the way this game works, we have strength, agility, stamina, charisma, wisdom, and intelligence. Strength, agility, stamina... Uh, Strength is how much damage we do. Agility dictates what weapons we can use. Stamina, I really have no idea what that does in the game. Charisma affects prices in shops. Wisdom affects our uh, clerical spells. And intelligence affects our mage spells. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we have 90, spell, 90 attributes to put out. So let's take a look. We have six attributes, so that leaves us, we put 10 in each, 30 extra. I'm going to do this. We are going to go 10 strength. We are going to go 30 agility. We are going to go 10 stamina. Uh, let's see, we're at 40 here. So 10 charisma. 20 Wisdom, 10 Intelligence. That looks like some good stats for our character to begin with. Next up, we have to choose if we're going to be a male or female. Well, if we're a male, we'll get a little bit of extra strength. If we're a female, we'll get a little more charisma. I'm going to go with male just because I'm a guy. All right, next, our race. We can be a human, an elf, a dwarf, or a hobbit. Ooh. These are some interesting choices for our race. Depending on who we choose, we're going to get a bonus. Let's take a look and see what those bonuses are, shall we? Uh, we can get an intelligence, an agility, a strength, or a wisdom bonus. You know, we need a little more strength, uh, agility for this character to begin. Because I am worried about one thing in this game, which is your ability to wield weapons is all based on your agility. So we're going to go as an elf. There we go. Now we have to choose our class. We can be a fighter, a cleric, a wizard, or a thief. Well, in this game, anybody can use any weapon as long as they have the stats for it. But you're not allowed 
uh, to use certain spells if you're not a, a cleric or a wizard. And I want to have access to those spells. So we're going to go in as a cleric. And we're going to name Grugtar. So there's a look at our opening stats. They look not too bad to me. We'll go ahead and enter Grugtar and we'll say yes, this is satisfactory. Origin probably presents part two, number one best-selling Ultima Two: Revenge of the Enchantress. It goes by so, <clears throat> so fast. There is no way to read that. Sorry, folks. Needed a drink. All right, let's play a game of Ultima Two. So there is our character. There is Grug. You see, we have our little onk there because we're a cleric. So if we take a look here. We currently have a level zero male elf cleric. We have our weapon is our hands, our armor is just our skin. We have no spell ready to cast. There's our stats. We don't have any torches, keys, or tools. That's okay. We'll get some as we move on. We're not carrying any items. We have no spells. We got nothing. So first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get ourselves equipped. As you can see, this is another Ultima game with no... Oh, you may hear a weird sound. There we go. This is another Ultima game with no music in the background. You'll also notice that that pass keeps coming up. Time is continually moving in this game unless we're in the stat screen. So we need to keep that in mind. In the bottom right, we have our hit points, food, experience, and gold. Similar to Ultima 1. So the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and get ourselves equipped. We're going to need to get a weapon, some armor, and let's get ourselves some transportation so we can move a little faster. Oh, there's that beautiful sound. All right. Oh, we've got some enemies coming at us. We have a thief, or is that a fighter? Let's attack him. We hit him. Oh, come on. Let's kill this guy. Oh, he's running away. Oh, you don't run from us. Come on. Come back here. Oh, we really missed the bow and blaster from Ultima 1 already. Come on, hit him. All right. So we killed him. I'm not sure what that was. That may have been a thief. I'm not sure. We need to move over to our first town, which you're going to notice something on this map if you pay attention to it. Previously in Ultima 1, we had the map of Caesarea, four continents, a northwest, uh, a north, west, northeast, southwest, southeast continent with some islands. Here, we're actually on Earth. So if you look, we're actually right now in the Russian area. There is uh, Denmark, Sweden. There is Great Britain. And now we're out here on the Iberian Peninsula. And down here is the first town. This, I believe, is the town of Linda. Go ahead and enter there. Yep, town of Linda. How we doing, guards? Something else in this game? The people have something more to say to us. Let's talk to the guards. Hey, pay your taxes. Thank you, guard. We will. We need to go ahead and find ourselves a weapon shop. Uh, this is a pub. What do these guys have to say? Want to buy a watch? No thank you, thief. Nice to know there are some thieves in that pub selling stolen watches. I think our weapon shop is over this way. Nope, that's the exit to the town. Maybe it's up here. Couple of people walking around. It's like a wizard. Some guy here. What's up? A fighter says, Oh, me tough. Very nice, fighter. Here's the weapon shop. Let's talk. The weapon shop. Uh, let's get a bow. Number four. For 84 gold, how about it? Sure, I'll take the bow. Yes. All right, so we bought a bow. Let's ready our bow. Number four. We can equip that because we have good enough strength. Does he sell the blaster here too? Oh, 
I don't want to yell. He sells the phaser. How much is the phaser? 576 gold. We can't quite afford the phaser yet, folks. But we'll be coming back for that. Again, the world of Ultima. Wizards, warriors, clerics, and spacemen. Next up, let's get ourselves some better armor. Uh, is this the armor shop? Yes. Hello, armor shop guy. Uh, let's buy some leather armor. Ah, yes, leather for only 84 gold. How about it? Yeah. Go ahead and buy that. Thank you. Oh, and we need to wear our leather armor. Perfect. Let's take a look at our inventory. So we have ooh, a bow, our leather armor. They're currently equipped in the weapon and armor slots. Looks good. We also picked up some boots. I'll go over the items in the game in the next episode because we'll be talking about those a lot more. Right now we're just kind of getting started. So now that we have a weapon and some armor, the next thing we need to do is we need to get to uh, a town so we can buy food. If you remember from the Ultima games, you can see we have that food number. It's ticking down. So if we look around, actually down here, this is Africa. Uh, there's the island of Madagascar. Uh, but there's nothing here. Oh, there is a little town right here. Here is a village. Let's go ahead and enter it. Which village is this? Anybody here have anything to say? Want to buy a watch? No, thank you, thief. Uh, I talked to the guard. He had no response. Okay. We have some clerics here. We could buy some clerical spells. The light spell... Uh, the surface spell, a couple other spells. We'll buy those later. Uh, right now we have no interest because we don't have a lot of money. Oh, I don't like the way this town is laid out. Here we go. We have found Alfred's Fish and Chips. So let's talk to the guy here at Alfred's Fish and Chips. The food here costs $52.00 per 100 food. Let's go ahead and buy 100 food. So you can see that we're back up to 397. As you can see, we are burning through food at a crazy rate in this game. So we've gotten ourselves some food. The next step is we need to go ahead and get some more hit points. Remember, like Ultima 1, we need to raise up our hit points and our food so we have enough stockpiles for the game. Oh, here we have a little guy to attack, a little orc. Let's hit him with our bow. Oh, one hit and he's already running away. Come back, Mr. Orc. Okay, fine. Go away. All right, now you're going to come back. Take it. Come on, orc. All right, we killed an orc. Got some gold and experience. Great. If you see on that island right now, that is the Castle Britannia. We need to get there, but we can't because there's water in the way. We're going to let some time go by, and we should see one of the time gates that the game talked about. Again, this is a time travel story. Oh, there's a time gate. That's not the one we want, however. We're waiting for a different one. This is the one we want. So you can see we are now on in England, but you'll notice that there's a town up here to the north of us that wasn't here before because not only are we in England but we are in a different time period as well I don't even know which time period this is um, we'll probably find out but let's enter the castle in the meantime oh, we got more people to talk to hmm. that guy didn't have anything to say to us we have a mess hall and a chapel, but we're looking for Lord British himself. Oh, there's Lord British. What do we have here? The merchant orders, give the king a tribute. I refuse, merchant. How about the guard? Pay your taxes. That's fine. But if we walk up to Lord British up here, lovingly uh, labeled for us at the top, and we talk to him, He's going to take 50 gold. Oh, come on. He took 50 gold from us. 
and gave us 300 hit points. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and give him a little more and get our our health up because we're going to be doing a lot of fighting. So we've got our hit points up. We know where we can buy food, but as you can see, food drains very quickly in this game. So we're going to need a lot of food. And I don't think we're going to have enough money to buy it. So what we need to do is we're going to save. Okay. We're going to enter this town. This is the town of Port Boniface. Pretty nice town. Here's the Crossroad Chapel. We can buy some spells here. But the other thing we can find here is we're going to find a very specific store. There it is. You'll notice that this food place, it's McDonald's. That's right, folks. And here at the front is a jester. If we talk to the jester, this is Ronald McDonald. He sings, try our new ride through. That's great. So if we come up here to McDonald's and we talk, for 52 we can get 100 food. We're going to say yes. So hey, that guy gave us some food. No onions to go, please. He says, thank you, come again. So we could continue to buy food. I'm going to pause this while I talk because the game just moves so fast. But instead of continuing to buy food, we're going to be sneaky. We're going to steal from the him. We stole some food. We're going to do it a couple more times. Notice our food is going up. We're at 625. No luck. 725. 825. And no one noticed because of our agility. So we can safely get out of the town. Oh, by bumping into everything. And we are now up to 800 food. We are going to save. And we're going to pause for a minute. So we have our mission. We are to travel through time, find Minax the Enchantress, and destroy her to stop evil from spreading into the world. We know what we need to do. We need to raise up our hit points. We need to get more food. As you can see, we're, our guy just can't stop eating. Must have a tapeworm the size of of a dog in his stomach and along with getting more food we need to get gold from killing creatures what I'm going to do is I am off screen going to do a bunch of leveling similar to what we did uh, in Ultima 1 so that you don't have to watch us grind that all out I've seen playthroughs uh, where I've kind of scanned through and people grind all of that out in this game it's not really exciting to watch so I'm going to go ahead and do that off screen for everybody. And when we come back, we will have a stockpile of food and hit points and gold. And we'll talk about the different items in the game. And then we will go on our adventure to defeat Minax, the evil enchantress. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please tell your friends. And as always, we hope to see you soon.